Today on In Touch, we are joined by the Silver Fox in the Springbok coaching setup. The guy you might have seen run up and down on the side of the pitch during Springbok test matches, and perhaps you haven't been quite sure what exactly he does. Turns out he's quite a crucial cog in that whole green and gold machine. He's Welsh, so we're going to get some impressions uh, from him on what moving to South Africa has been like, how he's adjusted, what's the weirdest and the best part about being, uh, well, South African for the moment. And and we'll get some Six Nations and Super Brew predictions from Arlette Walters as well. Remember that you can always watch In Touch live on Facebook every Thursday afternoon. Or if you're watching us on Super Sport 1, you can tune in for that, of course, every Thursday night. Uh, when Arlette left Munster before he joined the Springboks, uh, they made a pretty cool little video showcasing what the guy is like behind the scenes. And we managed to dig it up. Welcome to In Touch, Alec Walters. It's uh, lovely to have you in studio. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad you can see now that I only have one dance move. It's just... It's just that. The guns, yeah. But, yeah. I, I mean, you've spent some quality time in South Africa now. We would have expected you to have adopted one or two other moves somewhere along the line? Mm, mm, mm. Not yet. Not no, yet. No, no, not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Um, so, the Welshman in the Springbok coaching setup. Um, was it quite as hard to adjust as it seems it would be? How much Afrikaans have you learned? Uh, bits and pieces, all the bad <laughs> stuff. I can blame Yaku Tauta before I even came over <laughs> for, 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 for an understanding, a vast understanding of the, of the bad words anyway. So. Okay, so um, you worked with Rasi Erasmus at Jock Ninaver mm. before. Yep. Um, when you got the call, when Rasi said, come join me, I'm coaching the box, I'd love you to be my high performance manager. Um, what was your first thought? Yes. Yes. Straight away, immediately, and I can say that hand on heart. Within, within seconds, it was, uh, it was just something that I thought was an unbelievable opportunity. And obviously because both Rassi and, and Jacques have, have, have shaped me as a, as a coach and my philosophy, I, I just wanted to work with those two guys again. And you are getting ma married in a matter of days to an Irish lass. Mm. Um, what did she have to say about the prospect of moving to South Africa? Well, as soon as, uh, as, soon as I mentioned, I, I asked, even though I would have agreed straight away anyway. <laughs> um, she, she had no, no, no real choice in it. But no, she was excited. Fortunately, she's travelled before and she was open to it. So, uh, no, the timing was great for us to come over. Now, what's interesting to me about your background is that you left Wales, um, a very small country. I think South Africans often don't realise quite how small. I mean, it's the size of Gauteng, basically, hey? Yeah, and for me to explain to some of the guys about how small Wales is, you can drive from the bottom to the top in, in three hours. Okay. So, so that's how small it is, you know. Basically Gauteng. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> small effort. And you, you moved to New Zealand, you've spent some time in Australia, and um, you are pretty well travelled and you've seen a lot of what the rugby world has to offer. What's the best thing about being based in South Africa right about now? Well, first of all, it's the excitement about the World Cup. It's, it's about the Rugby Championship and the World Cup, so that's the immediate thing. And then seeing how the Super Rugby teams are, are, are going and developing so well, um, the players and then the two teams at Pro 14 level as well, who I think are, are, are encouraging. Um, they're, they're, they're definitely get into grips with that competition. So it's just exciting to be here. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and I love the fact that the country's passionate. And I know football or soccer is big in the country as well. But I think there's a, I, I hope there's genuine belief that, that, that the box can, can do something, can perform this year. Well, um, we really do have the best of both worlds. Where else can you coach players who play both Super Rugby and Pro 14? Quite literally nowhere else in the world. And we also have a great variety of languages and immense rugby passion. Now, this week, everyone's been taking the Woolies Water Challenge. Um, maybe you have a passionate coach, a, a lot like Sesetu from uh, Queens, that you'd like to film for us, because we just love seeing this guy's gears. 
boys. Oh, yeah. But Sarge, you know what? Come here. You want to grow off the hard boys. Listen up here. Great practice. Great lines. Great skill. Queen's College. We keep it going. We keep it flowing. First of all, the past two days, I myself as a coach have learned a lot because of you boys here. This year, we put Queen's College back on the map. The ref, the ref, looks nice and green. Greener pastures, greener pastures. Every opposition that sets foot over here, demolish. Last year was a mistake. Last year was just a practice play. This year, we just dominate. Yeah. This year, we just dominate. Um, that, that's some serious enthusiasm right there. I can't believe how similar that is to Rassi. Oh, really? Incredibly similar. <laughs> So um, you've coached with a, a pretty wide variety of coaches. And some colourful team talks, who's, who's right up there? Ooh, that's a tough one now. Um, they, they really range. Someone like Colin Cooper now, who's up, uh, with, with the Chiefs, he was so quiet and just so calm all the time when, really? when, when I was expecting something, some fire to come. Mm -hmm. Um, they've all been pretty... Weren't you pretty working calm. with Jake at the Brumbies, with Jake White? Yes, yes. What, what is the level of intensity? Is he on the other end of that spectrum? Yeah, he was, he was pretty intense. He was just like... Uh, sometimes the angry school teacher would come out in him anyway, so he definitely <laughs> had the ability to, to flick a little bit. And um, the guys, I'm sure, at the Springboks are speaking mostly English around you in order to include you in most of the conversations. Has your Afrikaans become as good as Rassi's English in the process? <laughs> um, potentially, yes. <laughs> um, but, 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 but I have been spending more time with the, with the Corsa, you know, mm. so, so my, my, my Corsa is definitely better than his. Oh, OK. Well, I mean, at least you are putting in a very solid <laughs> effort. Yes. Um, now, a lot of people think that you are just in camp with the Springboks when it's test season and for the rest of the year you're riding your bicycle or climbing mountains. You live in Cape Town, I mean, yeah, exactly. that's what people do there. Um, what is life like when you're the high performance manager for, the, for a team like the Springboks when they are not in camp? Uh, pretty busy, actually. Um, I know people must think that we're just away and I'm in, on Clifton Beach most mm. of the time. You can see that I'm definitely not anyway. Um, <laughs> A lot of time analysing, a lot of time planning. Um, obviously, such a big year, we have to get all our planning done as well and as accurately as, and well, well beforehand as well. Um, and a lot of analysis work on not only international rugby, obviously the Six Nations now, um, but Pro 14 looking at what's happening uh, in Super Rugby as well. Would you, if you had a magic wand, have more Springboks playing Super Rugby as we see at the moment, or would you want the greatest bulk of them playing for Pro 14 Rugby? Because you've coached in Pro 14, but you've now been keeping a very close eye on Super Rugby, particularly since you've been working with the box. That, that, that's a tough one to answer. Um, some players, I think, would benefit from playing Pro 14 rugby mm. for, the, for the tactical awareness, um, playing in tough conditions, playing against teams who are happy to hold on to the ball for 30 phases. Um, but for others, it's brilliant that they're still involved in Super Rugby because they get the other end of the spectrum. Mm. Um, so probably a mix, which is not the answer you probably want mm. to know. But it's interesting because we have the opportunity to have both. Yeah, no, totally. And, uh, and that's where I, I'm, I'm really confident that the players at the Kings and, and, and the Cheetahs are, are going to develop rapidly, you know. They're going to be faced with such a vast array of teams. So, uh, um, what I mean there is you have to pre prepare yourself for, to play against a team like Leinster, who are strong across the board, to play in another team who are maybe have an unbelievable kicking game, to another team who have all-out attack like a, like a Connacht were. Whereas in Super Rugby, most teams, they play a similar-ish similar, uh, similar -ish brand of rugby. So I think even in that, they, those players, I, I, I really believe, will mature very quickly. 
Well, I mean, the conditions in Pro 14 alone makes uh, contending in that competition, of course, incredibly challenging, but very rewarding once you've figured it all out. Speaking of figuring things out, what exactly does someone do when they call themselves a high performance manager or a strength and conditioning coach? Uh, Wayne Taylor is um, a guy who's very established uh, in that realm of sport, not only in rugby. Um, and we checked in with him this week to get some of his thoughts on the topic. Hi, I'm Wayne Taylor. I've been head of strength and conditioning and medical team coordinator for a number of teams at both Super Rugby and international level. Here are a couple of key considerations for behind the scenes to maximise performance. It's not just about the game, it's about influencing the players 24-7 from four hours of training time to influencing the other 20 hours we don't see them. As an example, media and commercial obligations, the time the player is standing on their feet, making sure they have healthy nutrition going into that rather than just eating snacks. Players have varied body composition and body shapes depending on the game plan and also their role on the field. So we're calculating strength and power to weight ratio. So if we associate that to a vehicle, we don't want everybody to be a big bucky with a small motor. If they're big, they must have more strength to drive that mass. And equally, if they're smaller, we want to have a big motor and so they're explosive, which is giving us room on the field for that explosive and dynamic player as well, like a Damien McKenzie or Cheslin Colby. Even the best teams lose sometimes. It's a lot easier training coming off a win than it is coming off a loss. There's a mental and emotional response to the result that has an effect on the hormones of the body. The testosterone drops, cortisol or the stress hormone comes up. We need to get on that very quickly and try to spike the testosterone back up to get a result the following week. We use fun and games to try and influence that in our players. Injuries are a reality and an unfortunate part of the game. But we have to deal with those injuries and we have to minimise them as best we can by the strength and conditioning and preparation of our players. The players are getting bigger, faster, stronger and therefore the collisions are bigger, especially when they're running at pace in the midfield and they're hitting each other with more velocity. fascinated by this very scientific side of professional rugby, the, the side of rugby that we often gloss over and people kind of take for granted. Um, you studied, you have a BSc and a master's degree, why is it that you became, this, decided to follow this course and, and why is it that you do what you do? Uh, firstly, I, I, an unbelievable passion for rugby from a young age. Uh, my father had been a supporter of, of Snethi, who are now the, the Scarlets in Wales. So I started going to watch with, uh, games with him from six years old. And I, I remember it was when I was seven that I, I was really, I really got the bug. But uh, unfortunately, even though my obsession with rugby was so high, uh, my, my qualities as a, as a player were pretty rubbish anyway. So, so I knew from quite a young age that I wasn't going to get anywhere by playing the game. So the safer option would be um, to try and find another avenue in. And I, and I had, uh, a healthy um, passion for, 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 for this side, for the fitness aspect. I'd, I'd dabbled a bit with athletics as well, so I enjoyed that side of things. So, yeah, that, that's how it came about. And then I was, I was fortunate after my studies to go straight in and work with the, with the Scarlet. So that's where it started. You've, you've done some interesting things with the box. I've heard them talk about Gorilla Ball, uh, which is something that you brought in when you joined them. Tell me about that and the thinking behind it. Uh, it, it's something that I've stolen from another practitioner anyway, but it's, um, it's on a beach volleyball pitch, um, or court I should say, and it's just with a heavy medicine ball where you have to just throw and then, so it's a, it, it, it's a game of volleyball but like with, a, with, a heavy, with a heavy medicine heavy ball. Heavy volleyball. Uh, yeah, and uh, the kind of thinking around that and some other things are, obviously in a week it, it's tough for the guys who aren't involved in the game, so it, it is nice, just like Wayne said there. You have to make it a little bit fun as well. Get the same workload out of the guys, give them a tough task. But when it's a bit more fun, a bit more challenging, and a bit different, it, it, it makes it nice. I heard from one of your colleagues, I put a few calls in, that you are more disciplined in terms of what you eat and how you train than almost any of the actual athletes you coach. 
Do you lead by example? Is that your philosophy? Uh, I, d I don't know who you spoke to, but if you saw me tucking into all the desserts, um, <laughs> I, I, I think I, they'd call you a liar, uh, call me a liar anyway. But uh, no, I, I enjoy training. I'm, I'm getting on now. You can see I'm getting older. You know, the, the old silver fox is well and truly there now. But um, nah, I think there's certain things you can lead by example. Others, you know, I, I, as in, I couldn't do what the boys do in terms of a fitness session. I will never be out there running with them because if I could, I think that they're, they're in a pretty poor standing anyway. So they are way, way, way more fit than, than I am, way stronger <laughs> and way more disciplined as well. So, so how do South African players, in, in terms of the bare talent, like the essence of their um, physical abilities, compare to players that you've coached elsewhere? Because I often hear people say, we just don't have the players to beat the All Blacks. Do you agree? No, definitely not. I come in from the outside. Um, there are players with talent in, in every country that I've been to. There's players with massive talent here and an unbelievable athletic ability. And, that, and that's probably the best way I can say it. I saw there was an article this week saying that the England winger, Joe um, Thokonasinga, has run over 10 meters per second, uh, over 50 meters. A lot of our backs can do that regularly, um, you know. So it, it, it's they're, they're 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 pretty gifted. Uh, a lot of these players are extremely gifted in in what they can do, um, and and then I guess it's part of my job then to not make them fitter, but actually make them better rugby players on top of that. So if if we can get that right, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll be up at the top table pretty soon again. Seems like we're in very good hands in that respect. Uh, speaking of backline players, very quick guys, uh, Damien Willemser, we told you last week that uh, we checked in with him to get to know his heroes. The uh, story of us with Damien Willemser is up on Supersports Facebook and YouTube. Here's a snippet from that if you haven't seen it yet. Strand, you know, rugby's really big there. Um, so yeah, I just grew up Playing rugby, playing cricket, you know, um, definitely when I came here, um, the, the passion for rugby just grew. Um, we didn't have a lot of transport, so he was always the guy to, to, to come and, and, and help with the transport, you know, always just giving an extra hand. And he played a really big role in, in my life and developing my rugby, you know, um, after school. He would, he would tell me to come to, to his house, you know, and we'd do some extras and, and, and work on the, on the stuff I had to work on. Caroline Rupert, she came to uh prize giving ceremony of the, of the school. She came with her grandma, Donna Downey. That night she came to be a guest of the prize giving. And then she saw all the rugby awards being given to all these boys. And she asked, how is it possible that so many teams, how, where do they train? And so I took her down. And since that day, she stayed on board. We, we coached together at the tents and the under 11. We stayed with up for the under 13s. She realized that these boys have so much talent. And she managed that year, 17 scorers went over to Paul Ruiz. For Master, I just want to say a big thank you to them, um, obviously to Caroline for granting me the opportunity to, to, to attend Port Rose for Coast Park, for playing such influential part in my early stages of my career and my life, you know, and it still does. Yo, I'm very humble, I can almost say it here, yeah. to be honest, I'm very honoured to have so much respect from such a great player and um, to be called a hero by Damien Williams, who is just awesome. Beautiful story around one of the best athletes uh, South African rugby has produced in the recent years. Uh, if you've just joined us, this is In Touch, and uh, our guest today, Alit Walters, is the head of performance or high performance manager for the Springboks. Um, he's Welsh. Uh, he moved to South Africa about 18 months ago. No, or less. No, less. Yeah, yeah, just just over a year ago. Just over a year ago, and we are going to test just how South African he is uh, after a year here. How much South African he speaks? Because uh, we might think of ourselves as people who speak a lot of English, uh, but there are plenty of words that actually don't fall into the universal definition of that term. Uh, what is a babalas? Type of food. Well, it, it does tend to go with food, but it's an, actually an, a hangover. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed that he hasn't picked that word up yet. Um, Aina, as a coach, you Aina. should have heard Aina somewhere along the line. Better. Um, Aina is, it means ouch, like an uh, expression of pain. No, the players are too tough. They I, never I, feel pain. No, I haven't heard that one. Never, ever. No, no. Um, a jaw, what's a jaw? A jaw. Mm. 
Is it a chat? Having a jol with someone? Well, I mean, chatting could be part of it, but it's, it's a party. Ah, okay. It's close, though, Good. it's close. Yeah. Um, now, now, how, how long is now, now? If now. I say, I'll see you now, now. Now, now is immediately. Isn't, ooh, or is now, now in a little bit, and now is immediately. Yes. Ah, see it. Well done, close, close, you've got close, that one. Close. That is the one that doesn't make any sense of all of these words, is now, now. Lacquer, come on, you might. Ah, by lacquer, <laughs> in touch, by lacquer. By lacquer, in touch. <laughs> and then, yebo? Yebo, uh, is this to say yes? Yes. I agree. Indeed, well done. Yep. And shop? Ah, uh, shop, shop. Um, I don't actually know what shop means, but I hear people saying, if I say um, anything, it's normally, ah, shop, shop. So I don't actually know what it means, I just know I hear it a lot. But people are nodding in agreement, so you think it's good? Yes. Yes, basically it means cool. Okay, okay, okay. shop. And then, Nkosi Sikilele, the anthem. How are you doing? I might, I'm not going to ask you to sing it. Okay. But how are you doing on singing the anthem? Uh, the first part, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Now the Afrikaans part, oof, that's that's tough. I, I tried reading, and it doesn't doesn't sound anything like when I when but I. But Afrikaans and Welsh is not too different. No, I know like Gruet <laughs> is is easy for me to pronounce because there's a lot of Achs in in yeah. Welsh and everything. But um, no, the, the the Kosa part at the start and everything that that's okay. But uh, the Afrikaans, I, I'm going to have to practice. Has someone explained to you what it actually means in Kosi Sikilele Africa? Um, God bless Africa. Yes. But that's the extent of I, what I know until we get to the English part at the end. And then you... Oh, then you're oh I'm, I'm rocking them. <laughs> the guns are out again. With the fingers. Okay, so when we return, we're going to get Alet Walter's Super Brew predictions and his thoughts, since he knows a thing or two about those and all the Nemosphere countries on the Six Nations this weekend. Uh, besides getting uh, up close and personal with Damien Willemse, uh, my cousin and my people also lifted this, uh, the lid on exactly who inspired him to become a rugby player. Player. The um, hero I'm gonna be like, um, uh, the guy was playing for, for, for Stomas and Western Province, but in overseas, Lana Japan, and no longer than in town, or because of. Um, a player uh, in a step and a player in a Berlin, a player, and a player in an SBD. And when I have uh, confidence, as yeah, no. Phenomenal uh, guy, Makazule Mapimpi. Also um, a great athlete, according to, uh, to Aled Walters, and I mean, you'd know. Yeah, uh, he's, he's incredibly fast, incredibly fit and looks after him well, um, himself so well anyway. So it's great to see him having a great start to, to the Super Rugby campaign. Do you play Super Brew? I don't, I don't, sorry. Not yet? No. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. Uh, if you are not too shabby at Super Brew, make sure that you play along. Uh, you can join the Super Euro pool on superbrew.com and you can win one of 42 Samsung Galaxy Note 9 smartphones. Vodacom Red subscribers can win even more exclusive prizes. Uh, so make sure you go on there. And if you don't have any good ideas for this weekend's picks, uh, luckily we have someone who knows a thing or two about rugby. Um, so this weekend we have a mouthwater encounter between the Brumbies and the Waratahs. Now, you've been involved in Australian rugby before. What's going to happen there? I back the Brumbies, but uh, after last week's game between the Waratahs and the Reds, uh, if I miss it, I'm not going to be too, too sad. Brumbies by? Oof, not much. I'd say Brumbies by eight. Brumbies by eight. Stormers Jaguares at Newlands. Oh yeah, I just saw the Jaguares team there now. I think I think the Stormers will be too strong for them. Okay. Um, after the bye week as well, I think Stormers will probably win and win by five. Not many tries scored so far this season by the Cape Townian side. Five is a big call. Sunwolves Reds. Ooh, I hope the Sunwolves. I really do. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I think I'll go with the Sunwolves and, and for them to win by two. Okay, so that's your Coffee and Rusks encounter on Saturday morning, Die Rise It. Highlanders Crusaders? It's hard to see past the Crusaders at the moment, isn't sure. it? So it's, uh, I, th I think they'll steamroll another, another, another Kiwi team. I'd say they could win by, by nine, ten. 
nine or ten even. Okay, double digits there for the Crusaders. An unstoppable team so far this season. And finally, the Lions are playing host to the Rebels in Joburg. Ooh, what, what a clash. Mm. It, it's going to be the free-flowing Lions against the Vessels' is detailed Rebels. And they're so, also unbeaten. Yeah, yeah. So, um sways, I'll go with the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> have to, and uh, and if it's a score of 56-44, I think he'd be pretty happy with that. But no, I think the Lions will win, and they'll win by 12. Lions by 12, that's a big call. And then speaking of big calls, there's uh, the small matter of a possible grand slam for Wales this weekend against Ireland. Uh, your wife-to-be is Irish, you're Welsh. Who's going to take it? Ireland. <gasps> yeah. How is Wales going to feel about you backing the Irish over them? Well, my, my, my Welsh accent's almost gone now anyway, so... We're ironing all of those edges out. Exactly. Um, Ireland by? Oh, very, very little. I think it'll be one, one or two points. One or two points. Yeah. And England too strong for Scotland, hey? Oh, that could be a massacre. I, yeah. think, I think England, the way they're going, and Scotland with all the injuries, that could be a 20-point win. Yeah, it could actually blow out. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on Intel. Pleasure. Thank you very much. And enjoy um, the rest of your stay in Cape Town. Um, oh, and uh, congratulations on the wedding summer beforehand. Thank you. Main congratulations to her, though. Oh, wow. OK, so he's <laughs> humble as well. Yeah. <laughs> Alid Walters uh, on In Touch. Make sure that you keep in touch with us during the week. Use that hashtag SSRugby. Same time, same place next week. For now, cheers. And on that note, thanks so much for watching. And if you'd like to see some of our older episodes, click up here to subscribe to Supersport's YouTube channel over there.